Hello and welcome, or should I say welcome back, because I'm sure you've been watching throughout the day. It is day one of the 2024 World Wheelchair Rugby Paralympic Qualification Tournament. We're at the New Zealand campus of innovation and sport, and here we are for the first Group B match. The Netherlands on the right, and look at that on the left, proudly there in all black. New Zealand wheelchair rugby. New Zealand versus Netherlands. And we are going to have the national anthems to kick things off. God defend New Zealand, followed by the Wilhelmus, the two national anthems of New Zealand and the Netherlands. We are going to get Group B underway in a few minutes' time. We've already had Group A action. And we've already had the national anthems, but now we have the Haka. My name's Drew Lilly, and I've got goosebumps. Firstly, after watching that absolutely amazing haka, and secondly, because alongside me, I have a Paralympic gold medalist from 2004, Jai Waite. How's it feel to 
to hear that and to see that, well, get the blood stirring. Yeah, thank you, Drew, and thank you. Uh, yeah, wow, that was an impressive haka. I have been part of a few of those, but none quite as impressive as that. Looking at the lineup, and two things to pick out here. Maya Marshall, Armai is back, and Jacinta Richardson making her debut. So two female players in the squad here for New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, this, this, I think, might possibly be the first time we've had two female players on the squad at the same time. Uh, debut for Jacinta, as you said. This is a big moment. She's got her family here, so this is going to be a great moment for her. And a full squad to choose from for the Wheel Blacks, so they'll be having plenty of interchanges. This, this is probably one of the few times we've had a squad this size. Like, often New Zealand teams travel with very small squads. Just the nature of our player depth compared to some of the other international teams. Tokyo, I think there were only eight players who made the journey over there to the last Paralympics that were just three years ago. We're into a short Olympic cycle this time around, and this obviously is qualifying for the Paralympics. Five teams have already made it through, and there are another three spots up for grabs here. So the two finalists and then the team that wins the third and fourth place playoff will make it through to Paris in just under six months' time. Now, before the match, we spoke to former coach and now mechanic for the New Zealand team, Greg Mitchell. Greg, uh, first game up for the Wheel Blacks. Uh, what are you expecting from the Dutch? Uh, expecting a lot of new stuff. We've never played them, um, so it's great to play a different team for once. You get play the same teams over and over, like Australia and Japan for us. So playing them, you just got to get into the game, learn what they're doing, and then expand on that as the game goes on. And we've got a couple of new players for a tournament like this. Um, Going to get some minutes for them? Hopefully. Um, we want to play our whole squad where we can every game. Um, but yeah, exciting today for Jacinda Richardson to play her debut. Um, she's a awesome person to have around the team, young as well, which is what our sport needs. We want young people in the sport. So yeah, really excited to see her out there. Awesome. Go well. Thanks, Sarah. Sure, sure, sure. Greg Mitchell there, who is a former coach, then assistant coach and mechanic. He's been part of the video analysis team. He's done almost everything for New Zealand wheelchair rugby. Now taking a look at the Oranje, the team in orange. They have just 10 to call from, most of them with plenty of experience from the Euros last year. That was around 12 months ago that the Netherlands took part in the Euros. Didn't make it through direct qualifying. That was France as the hosts, then Great Britain and Denmark. And their coach, Martin van Hinter, spoke to us a few minutes ago. Martin, welcome to New Zealand. Uh, first game up against the hosts. Uh, what are you expecting? Yes, we don't know yet because we are the, 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 the team. We came as last in this tournament. Uh, our ranking place on the world rank ranking list is uh, the 15th. So uh, we, we will do our best and uh, yes, we hope we can win, but we don't know yet because we have not that experience uh, at this moment. I think we are on the duck, so uh, I'm happy with a, with a nice game, with a good game. Great. And um, some of your players, any standouts that we can look forward to seeing? Sorry? Um, any players from your team that we can look forward to seeing today that uh, excite the crowds? Uh, any exciting players from your team? Any exciting players? Yes. Uh, we have Ben Bazoon. He's, uh, Number seven. Um, he's, uh, at this moment, he's a one-pointer. Um, uh, he's incredible. He's a very nice. Uh, f uh, fair, we, uh, we, I have all, all good players, nice players, uh, very charismatic players. Uh, David van den Dop. He shall play a lot of, of minutes. Um, but also, if you look at it, yeah, Job, Job, Job van der Laan, number eight. He will also play a lot. And Hector, Hector Loma, it's number 42. He's a new player uh, for us last year. At, uh, 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 he did it very well last year. Well, uh, good luck and we'll uh, speak to you after the game. Thank you very much. Very chatty as a nation, the Dutch. And we heard from Martin van Hinter there. And the match has got underway. We have had the first tip off and it went the way of the team in orange. Their starting lineup: Ben Bazoun, Jop van der Laan, Davy van den Dop, and Hector Loma. Early turnover. So it was first blood to the Netherlands winning the tip-off, but then 
the initiative immediately rested back by the Wheel Blacks, who are starting with Cam Leslie, Hayden Barton Coots, Gavin Rolton, and Robert Hewitt. A very experienced lineup. Cam Leslie on the ball there. Oh, well, nervous, nervous start from the two teams. Yeah, I think you're right here, Drew. This is just, they just both need to settle into this game. But, uh, I, yeah, this is um, turnover, turnover. So we see here the wheelbacks have fallen back into a key defence, so we can only have three players inside that white box that you see on the, on the, uh, on the television here. Um, and turnover straight back. Huge block by HBC. He has the biggest reach in wheelchair rugby. And got a hand out there, and it managed to A, block it, and B, put it straight into the lap of Cam Leslie. HBC now looking to get the first points on the board for the Wheel Blacks. Gives it to Leslie, and over we go, and New Zealand take the lead, as you can hear from the crowd here at the NZCIS. Yeah, this crowd's definitely built up. There's a very strong local support here. Gets the ball over the halfway line, does Jop van der Laan, which you have to do within oh, 12 big seconds. Hit by HBC. Loma gets the ball off to Van den Dopp. Oh, and nice he manages work. to weave his way through there. Yeah, that's just nice patience, nice skill. Just waited for a hole to open up. Again, you know, only having three, three defenders in that space, you, know, you can create space and get through. Nice block, Gavin Rolton. That leaves HBC to feed Cam Leslie. Uh, New Zealand is falling back into the key. You'll see Cameron's up here by himself here. They'll fall back to that key defence again. The Kiwis are obviously feeling pretty confident, Drew, about their key defence here. Back they come. Nice work again. Good patience. It was Loma getting the ball over to Van der Laan, who was right on the line, managed to keep his wheels inside the line and get control of the ball. So scoring tit for tat at the moment, two apiece. You can see here the Dutch have set up a defence where they've put two on Cameron Leslie up high. Now I'll get the ball to Cameron. Oh! Let's see which way this one goes. Dutch ball. Incredible work there from the number 14, Davy van den Dopp. Managed to get a hand in there, and then the ball ended up rolling off the lap of Cameron Leslie. So another turnover for the Dutch. Can they convert it? Again, nervous times. Van der Laan spins this way and that, and Netherlands do indeed take the lead. And again, that double defence on Cameron. Good defence is all about identifying which players you don't want carrying the ball, and they've identified early that Cameron's one of those players. See again, two defenders on him. Timeout called, right? So a timeout called, as you can see, top of your screen, top left, we've got the score, 3-2 to the Netherlands, and then four is the floor timeouts, the 30-second timeouts that the players can take, and they do that when they think they're not going to be able to get the ball, for example, not going to be able to get the ball over the halfway line within 30 seconds. So you can see now that that's gone down to 3-2. So a timeout taken by New Zealand, two are the coaches timeouts those last for a minute and can be taken when the ball is dead and that's more for the coaches to reset so new zealand forced into an early timeout as you, as you say they've really identified camera leslie when i first started watching the sport he was classified as 3.0 and has gone down to 2.5 
let's be honest, is at least a 2.74. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, if it's, he's been very lucky for it to be rounded down. He's an absolute bandit off 2.5, isn't he? It has made a massive difference to what New Zealand can put out on court because uh, classification is all about what sort of function you have. And in Cameron's case, how long his limbs are. And his legs aren't what we would call fully formed. And there we go. So a player like Cameron can use his truck because he is what we call a quad amputee. So he still has the use of his trunk muscles. He can maneuver into space just like that. Cameron Leslie, arguably the best 2.5 in the world. And there's some great defense there from HBC and from teammate Robert Hewitt. Yeah, again, just identifying those players you want to have the ball. The, pro probably, we would say, like, maybe the two-pointers, the mid-range players that probably can't get a pass off as easy as some of the high-range players. So a first timeout taken by the Dutch. So wheelchair rugby, it's sport all about balance, so all the players on court have different levels of function and they've all given, been given a point rating for their players. So number, number eight here, uh, Van der Leen, 2.5. So that means he has less function in one arm than the other. The classifications are between 0 0.5 and 3.5, and it's a little bit like fancy football or the... Uh, competition you have in your office for uh, tipping you you're allowed a maximum of eight points on court at any one time so when you've got a 2.5 who is as good as Cameron Leslie that's absolute that's worth its weight in gold and also if you have female players the Dutch don't but as we identified earlier Jacinta Richardson and Maya Marshall are my for New Zealand you're allowed an extra 0.5 for each female player that you have on court so they're worth their weight in gold as well. It'll be interesting to see how much those two are used by New Zealand as this match wears on. Talking of weight of weight weight in gold there, Drew, Cameron, uh, swimming champion, Paralympic swimming champion. Indeed, yes, a couple of gold medals for him. And another timeout, New Zealand. That defence that the Dutch are bringing is just really intense. So a couple of gold medals. I've actually uh, done them a disservice. 2008, 2012, 2016 Paralympic 150 metre medley champion. A true, true way to gold. Indeed. Yeah. And he's getting some running repairs there. And I've, I see a substitution here, Drew. I think we've got Nuffy Lafono on for Robert Hewitt. He will just bring a bit more speed, I think, to that uh, lineup. Number 15 coming on. So a two pointer replacing a two pointer. Dutch remaining with their starting lineup. Hayden Barton Coots spinning this way and that. HBC bounces the ball. You have to do that every 10 seconds. How did he manage to get that over to Cameron Leslie? There was absolutely no space in which to do it, but he managed to do it, and that's because those two have played together for a good number of years now, and they can find one another almost with their eyes closed. Loma finds himself boxed in. He can't go back over into his defensive half of the court. That's an over and back, like a front court violation in basketball. Van der Laan manages to get the ball away and well corralled there by Loma to get control of the ball before it went over the line. Netherlands keeping their noses in front at the moment. This will be a bit of a feeling out period because the Europeans bring it. Oh, it might be another turnover. It's 
second turnover. Europeans play, play a different style of wheelchair rugby than we used to down in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's always different, you know, to face these teams that bring a different energy. So Lefono not able to keep possession of the ball. It rolls out of play and is a turnover. So the Dutch now have a chance to open up a two-point lead. Again, good control. European teams are really good at key attack. This is like, this is one of their bread and butter things. Like, they're so good at this. Here we go. We might see a bit of the speed that I was talking about. Lefono. Nice patience. Gets it back to Cameron Leslie. So they want to get the ball back off Nuffy as soon as they can. And we've got Cameron down. And yes, rightly. So once the player's on the ground, if he will remain there unless the ball starts heading back in his direction. So he can't ride himself back up. As you see, he's getting corrected up by the support staff. Um, these days we have to have the mat down just to protect the floors from the chairs. I'm sure it's not going to be the first time we see Cameron on the ground today. Exactly, yes. Body on the line. So the wheelbacks find themselves two points adrift. It's early going. But we're getting towards the last two minutes of this quarter. And New Zealand are going to be very keen to get the final score of this quarter. So this is when clock management comes into play. But that's a great block by Hector Loma. And again, another timeout. Uh, we have a 40-second shot clock in wheelchair rugby. So you get 40 seconds to score. Uh, the New Zealand team were down to two. So after this timeout, they'll only get 15 seconds to try and attack this Dutch key. The Dutch are really bringing it. They're really bringing it. They certainly are. They're the rank outsiders for this tournament there here. They didn't actually make it through European qualifying. That was the, the three that got there directly, France, Great Britain and Denmark. And then it was Germany and Switzerland were the next two to make it through to this qualifying tournament. The Dutch are here because there were two places left for the highest ranked teams that didn't qualify either through Asia, Oceania, uh, the Americas and Europe. So the Dutch and Colombia made it here as the, the rank outsiders, but they're given the lie to their ranking at the moment. And Cameron Leslie busting through. He did everything right there. He took the yeah. time out and you've only got four timeouts, but you, you've got to use them at some point, yeah. you can't take them with you, and if you convert a timeout into maintaining possession and getting the point, yeah. it must feel so good, so satisfying. Exactly right, they're no good at the end of the game. The Dutch, though, go straight up at the other end. HBC on the run. Needs to get it over the line, needs to bounce it and get it over the and halfway line. Waiting for his block and his screen. So Gavin here, look, he'll try and pick someone to take, take them out of the play. That was Gavin Rolton, the number nine. Trying to set the blocks. That comes loose, but it came off the Dutch player. I think it was van der Laan. So New Zealand will retain possession. It was Ben Bazoun, the number seven, who's come on. And the shot, shot clock won't reset, so we've got 10 seconds to score here. And turnover, Dutch. Didn't want to take a timeout, no. already taken two. So the Dutch, 65 oh. seconds left, they are two points to the good. They'll look to score on about 55 seconds here. It's all about that shot clock management. They really want to get the last score in this quarter. So if they can score quickly, that means that even if New Zealand run down the clock, scoring their next point, 
There will still be a few seconds left for the Dutch to have another possession. And 47. It'll be interesting to see what the Kiwis do here. See if they'll try and run that clock all the way out. The Netherlands with a three-point gap. That's huge. There hasn't been a whole lot of scoring. Neither team in double figures yet. OK, Kiwis might look for a full-court press here where they're going to try and keep the Dutch down this end and get a turnover. Less than 40 seconds to go, so the shot clock is taken out of the equation. Lefono trying to get a hand in there and get the turnover. Kiwis working back. The Dutch have come back to their sort of real structured approach to Key here. Less than 20 seconds to go. The Dutch are going to want to hold on to the ball and score as late as possible. Of course, time management's one thing. Actually, scoring is another, and they've done that. Barton nine seconds Coots. is a long time. Well, nine seconds, yeah. and the clock doesn't start. Le is going to inbound it, and it'll start now once it's touched. So, the race is on. What can Leslie do here? Can they get it to Barton Coots as quickly as possible? The answer is not quite, and that is a huge quarter for the Dutch. They absolutely outplayed New Zealand from the second half of that quarter onwards, and they lead 10-7 at the first three-minute break. Welcome back, and look at that scoreline, that is certainly not going to script as far as the home crowd is concerned. Netherlands leading New Zealand 10-7 after the first quarter. The great thing for New Zealand is that they get the first possession, and it's Maya marshall Armai who has come on. You can have rolling substitutions off and on as often as you like, and how about that? That's going to get the crowd right oh, on yeah. their side. Maya's probably got the, the biggest support crowd here, I think. She's, uh, I've seen plenty of jerseys with her yeah. name on the back. Yeah. yeah, she'll bring a different energy on defence, definitely. 
cousin, of course, of Benji Marshall, who is trying to turn the West Tigers around in the NRL in Australia. Oh, turnover, Kiwis. That key defence. Well, Jay, I was going to ask you what New Zealand needed to do to turn this around, get this three-point deficit out of the way as soon as possible. Yeah. And I think we've had the illustration of that in the first 24 yeah. seconds. Score quickly and get yeah. a quick turnover. Yeah. That certainly helps. I, I think two things that Maya will bring is that extra speed. And Cameron, nice pickup. The crowd's really come to life. Yeah, that's the other thing. Bring Maya on, the crowd really gets into it. So the Dutch had three minutes in which to enjoy their three-point lead. And now 33 seconds into this second quarter, all of a sudden, they're only one point to the good. I wouldn't say all of their hard work has been undone because they're in possession. And they ought to be able to score from this, you'd have thought. Oh, but nice defense. Oh, Hector Loma just getting over the line there. That's a huge point for the Dutch because that was touch and go there. He's, a, he's had a couple of big plays in this game. Really impressive. <laughs> Look at the crowd. The crowd go wild again. It's Maya time. Well, the first couple of minutes of the first quarter, I don't think there was any scoring and the two teams were incredibly nervous. Yeah. And then we've gone from... 10-7 to 11-10 in the space of a minute here. Almost another turnover there. Cam's trying to get an arm in there. Oh, we've got a holding foul. So you're not allowed to touch the arm or the body of the opposition. You can hold and challenge for possession of the ball, but you just cannot touch another player. So Cameron's going to spend a minute in the bin or until the Dutch score next. What the Kiwis got to be wary of is a penalty goal. So they got to make sure that if the Dutch score here, they don't incur another foul. Otherwise, Cameron will have to stay in the bin. And there we go. Cameron will come on now. So a valuable point for the Dutch. They haven't had any easy scores. Uh, their two tries so far this quarter have been hard earned. My uh, nice in position there. Backwards goal here from Cameron Leslie. Going in reverse. And a big smile. Yes, you, unfortunately you can't play your joker and go, if I score it backwards, can uh, I have double points? That'd be a good... Uh, do, you think, do you think we can get that uh, one brought in? Let's, let's try, let's try. There's enough officials yeah. here, we can yeah. ask them. See Maya bringing that defence. Oh, good score by the Dutch. Nice patient play. Vanderland just staying wide, getting an easy pass. HPC on the run. You do not want to be hit by HPC on the run. Two of them blocking him in. He finds Marshall Armai. Oh, nice. a great pass. pass. And HBC will have the wheels to outpace Loma. Bit of one-on-one -on, -one on defense back there on Cameron. Two similarly functional players. Just like what I was talking about before, Drew, with the trunk function. Those players that have got missing limbs, they're so valuable in the sport. They can just maneuver their chairs just by flicking their hips. They can get through spaces. New Zealand setting up in front of the key. That's the paint there that you can see, the white paint. Again, great, great key attack by the Dutch. They just play nice, patient, get a player in the in the in the paint, and you know, they'll just fire that ball in. See, yeah, look Leslie. at that trunk function, just flicks through those gaps. Now this is the time for the Kiwis to just transition, pick up their defense, pick up some players. Oh, looks like they're returning to the key here. 
Easy goals is that perfect time to like transition onto the defense, you know, pick up those players early. Yes, much along the lines of basketball, then as soon as you score, you immediately have to get back on defense. And again, that trunk function on full display there. Van, de Do Van de Dop, he just busts through those gaps so easy. HBC showing his incredible oh. wingspan. Okay, we have an equipment timeout here. So Maya's got a puncher. You would have seen that the chair there that hit Maya has like a bar at the front, which kind of, they do puncher wheels very easily. So you can have as many pit changes as you like. So you see the crew here bringing out a new spare wheel. They'll quickly swap it over. Sometimes the axle gets stuck like this at the moment. Each of these uh, wheels are about $1,000 each. So the tyre themselves isn't, isn't that expensive. You can replace the tyre pretty easily. It's about $80, but the, yeah. I don't know about replacing it easily. No. You can replace no. it for $80, so yeah. inexpensively, but yeah. actually getting the tyre back on the wheel, that That's takes a fair, t yeah. a fair while, doesn't it? Which is why they changed the wheels around. And it's... Uh, there's no hanging around in this sport. I was mentioning during an earlier game that wheelchair tennis, they tend to change the tyres, and that can take absolute ages, whereas in rugby, Almost it's all done in the space of about 10 or 15 yep. seconds. Almost Formula One pace, right? It is, isn't it? Yes. It's got to be. Which makes it such an exciting sport, one of the many reasons why it's such an exciting sport. 10 seconds in which oh. to inbound, and... Leslie got a hand to that. Oh, great pick up there. It's not out of the woods yet, though. Fundendop going this way, and that. Loma helping him out with a block on HBC. And that was a hard earned point for the Dutch. Van der Laan just did such a great job in that score, just under so much pressure. Leslie gets a bit of room. Back to HBC. Marshall Armay is making the move and picks that one up beautifully. Wonder if the Kiwis might soon look to change their defence up here and put some backcourt pressure on. Marshall Armay is blocked up. So it's three on three now. So the Dutch taking their time here so they can set themselves up in defence. The referee starts counting out the seconds. Oh, oh. turnover. The Dutch, wow, they're just really like, they just know who to target here. Ball into Cameron Leslie. On holding foul, again, that can't touch the body. And again, Vanderland's going to spend a minute in the bin or until the Kiwis score. You have certain players who are more prone to giving away fouls like that. We saw John Orozco of Colombia earlier in the day who scored the most tries at the Parapan qualifying tournament for the Americas and also gave away the most fouls. And then you have the clever players who know how to draw a foul yeah, and, and know how to right. encourage uh, a reaching foul from yeah. an opponent. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff, you know, that those are the little one percenters in the game that can really make a difference. The Dutch very low inbound here. This could be an opportunity for the Kiwis. They need to get the ball over the halfway line before 12 seconds is up and they've done just that and that's an incredible run coast to coast there by van der Laan. Yeah. hasn't got over there yet but he does now he's had an impressive quarter and they've trapped hbc on the baseline he's one of our most functional players so what they're trying to do is get him caught really low like so he has to work hard he's only got 12 seconds to get over half Otherwise, he's going to have to take a 
Timeout, no, fires the ball out to Leslie. What a reach. You've said it a yeah. number of times, Jai, but the trunk function's amazing. Isn't wow, it? just makes such a difference in this sport. And that was a perfect illustration of it there. He had to lean a long way, Cameron Leslie, but hauled that in. Two and a half minutes to go. Ooh, ball. So the ball goes out of play, but it came off Leslie, so the Dutch will inbound, but it still puts pressure on them. It's getting close to the 12 second here. Oh, nice work, Dutch, nice. Nice, patient play. Didn't panic, didn't worry about that 12 second clock. Oh, we got a jump ball here. So a jump ball is shared possession. So Van, Van der Land did a really great job there. Cameron had the ball on his lap. Van der Land held the ball on his lap, on Cameron's lap, and it was what we call a contested ball. So it goes back to the arrow. You might see an arrow over there on the score bench, and that just indicates uh, which direction the ball goes after a jump. And so the Dutch stealing possession here. An arrow now changing in the middle of your screen there. You can see the lady changing the arrow over, saying that the next possession will go the way of New Zealand, but the Dutch won't mind about that. They are poised to make it a four-point gap again. Oh, good defense, but Cameron just crossed that baseline, so now he's in the bin. Penalty box, I should say, penalty box. Kiwis, we call it a bin, I don't know. We're just used to putting things, uh, I don't know, maybe that's... It's, it's quite cold here as well, so yeah. is it a chilly bin? Uh, maybe it's a chilly bin. <laughs> I think it comes from uh, our rugby union background. Yeah, the sin bin. Sin bin, yeah. And I like the way you went from uh, jump ball to contested ball as yeah. well. There's uh, a yeah. lot of things, yes, a lot of teams call it a jump ball, but strictly speaking, it's a contested ball. So, one minute 45 to go in this quarter, and the Netherlands are once again four points to the good. Oh, we have a... F I think this might be a holding foul again. So the ball came off Cameron's lap there, but I think it was illegally stripped. It's, it's getting a bit bitty at the moment. The, the, neither team really getting into a rhythm. They had some great rhythm at the start, particularly New Zealand had great rhythm at the start of this second quarter. And then the Dutch have really disrupted play. So it's four on three at the moment. Job van der Laan still in the bin. And some great desperate defense from the Dutch. Marshall Armay is going to score this one. Here we go. What the Kiwis are trying to do is set up, a, they'll get the last score. Because they've got that contested ball, the, the, jump, the arrow that we just talked about, they will get the ball back in the next quarter. We talk a lot about clock management and you want to score last in one quarter and first in the next if you can. But the most important thing is to get those points on the board. Saw that earlier, yeah. Colombia versus Germany. This is why the Dutch are running time down and oh. HBC is going to try to knock him over yeah. the line and say, you're not going to take time off the clock, you're going to score right now. I'd say that with 54 seconds, that's advantage Netherlands at the moment. It's perfect timing for the yeah. Netherlands because even if New Zealand take the full 40 seconds to score now, <laughs> heart in mouth time there again between Marshall Armai and... Leslie, Leslie's going to try to score as quickly as possible and does so. So that means 45 seconds to go. Even if the Dutch take the full 40 seconds, New Zealand will have at least five seconds in which to score. And as I keep repeating, the most important part of all this clock management is actually scoring. Oh, Cameron's in the bin here. I'm not quite did he sure. Go out or did he go beyond the, the line? Ah, oh, holding foul. Went... Holding foul. I think when he tipped backwards there, he might have just put his hand out to stop himself. So, so 
the Dutch can now, four on three, they're going to take all 40 seconds in which to score. Three points to the good. This could be the final possession of the half. Yeah, they'll use all of this. When, well, Cameron in the bin, they're just going to run this clock down. They've made sure that Hayden Barton Coots yeah. to the right of your screen there is blocked in, so he can't come in there and try to barge one of the Dutch over the line and force them to score and therefore give up possession. And the, the Kiwis won't try and contest this either because they don't want a penalty goal. You can hear the Dutch counting down backwards. One point four seconds. So back goes Barton Coots, and he's going to throw a hail mary. Kiwi might just want it in safe here. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing. They don't want to give up a score. So at the end of the first half, it's not what the home team wanted. The Netherlands lead 23-19.
Welcome back to Wellington, where the scoreline isn't what the home crowd would have been hoping for. New Zealand at 19, Netherlands 23. New Zealand ranked number eight in the world. Netherlands down at number 15 in this Paralympic qualification tournament for wheelchair rugby. Three spots up for grabs. Jai Waite alongside me. What have you identified from the, the first half? You reckon that maybe... Hayden Barton Coots doesn't quite seem to be him his usual energetic self. Yeah, I just I'm just wondering if he should carry the ball a bit more stronger. Like when he's pushing and like going fast up court, he's a handful. And I think um, you know, a bit more time on the ball with HBC and, and there'll be a bit of a change of uh, you know, change in the scoreline. We are back underway. We have 16 minutes for the Dutch to hold out or for New Zealand to turn it around. And score there from HBC. HBC just breaking through that Dutch defence. So the advantage of the first possession of this third quarter for New Zealand. Obviously the next possession will go the way of the Dutch. So either the next hell ball or the start of the fourth quarter. So New Zealand still with it all to do. And nice control play there again. Vanderdop. New Zealand starting the second half with Cameron Leslie, Hayden, Barton Coots, Gavin Rolton, and Maya Marshall Armai. There she is throwing that one oh. out. Oh, that's lucky because it went off a Dutch wheel. That's a couple of times that I think Marshall Armai has left Barton Coots a little bit too much to do. He's got a huge wingspan, but there's a limit to, to what he can yeah. corral. It's just finding that range again after that halftime break. Yep, nice quick score. Now transition fast onto defense. This is good. This is what you want. This will turn things around. If the Kiwis can really bring that change of tempo on transitioning from scoring to defending and maybe hold their nerve as well yeah. you were saying Jai that playing in front of your home crowd you 99% of the time it's it's an away tournament and mm. then suddenly you've got the weight of expectation being at home and maybe the nerves showing towards the end of that second quarter yeah yeah it is it's a different pressure it's we wheelchair rugby we're often just tournaments in one country Dutch get it back to a four-point advantage. Can Leslie get there in time? Oh, just, really just a bounce. He got there, but it bounced off the front of his chair, and he managed to get that in again with that incredible trunk flexibility and strength that he has. But the Dutch oh, again. Oh, good defense, Meyer. Am I? Four in the key. Just like what I was saying earlier, we can only have three defenders in that white key area that you see there at the end of the court. Gavin Rolton entering the zone, so he goes to the bin for a minute or until the Dutch score. So the Dutch now four on three. This almost plays into the hands of the Dutch. They were in possession, and now they've got time to run down the clock obviously we're barely into the second half but they are three points to the good and have possession so every second that they can take off the clock penalty goal Hayden Barton Coots mm. going over the try line actually no that was not a penalty goal because they weren't in a scoring motion so Kiwis now have two in the bin so the Dutch will take their time here. They'll score this, and they'll look to trap maybe Gavin up high, Gavin Rolton up high. So as you can see, just to the left of your screen there, two in the bin. Hayden Barton Coots and Gavin Rolton. So it's four on two. The Dutch set themselves up and decide to block. Yeah. Cameron Leslie for the forthcoming play. So they're four points, still four points up. They've taken two minutes off the clock. 
So Kiwi's now under a contact warning. So it is full chair contact, but only once the whistle goes. So outside the ball coming in, you can't, uh, the whistle going, you can't. Oh, big ball, can you get it? Turnover, Dutch. Wow, they're really bringing it. It's all getting a bit unraveled for the Kiwis here, and we're going to see Maya Marshall Armai go off. And Nafi Lefono has come back on. The Dutch with the inbound, this to make it a five point advantage. Of course, it's still four on three. Rolton's been allowed out of the sin bin. Now we're back. Hayden Barton Coots was in there, and he's now out. That scoreboard, unfortunately, is a little bit flattering, and it's turnover after turnover. It's all going wrong for New Zealand at the moment. Yeah, just a bit of lack of communication there, I think. Don't think uh, Lafono was expecting the ball back quite as soon as he was. I was going to say, well, surely we need a coach's timeout here, yeah. and that was the hooter that you heard. So one minute in which to try to calm down this Wheel Black side that has seen it all go wrong in the first two and a half minutes of this third quarter. Jai, you'll have been in this position before. What do they need to do? Yeah, I think right now they'll be talking about how they can really put some pressure on the Dutch in, the, in their backcourt. Because, you know, the Kiwis are carrying a big squad here. The Dutch are smaller, so what they really want to do is work the Dutch over so they get tired. Because you can pull these goals back in that fourth quarter. That's what the Kiwis will be really looking to do, to do here. Well, we have some Look, Dutch fans in the crowd. Yeah. They're, they're looking a bit tense, but they should be in the good spot at the moment. There's definitely a bit of tension in the air here. Credit to the Dutch entourage that have made it all this way down here. But a lot is going to be asked of that man, Cameron Leslie. The Dutch yet again with an inbound. Five points clear in what's been a low scoring contest. Everyone's been made to work for the goals. And that's the case here. And player leaving the court. So, again, it was good pressure by the Dutch. They identified that uh, Lafono had done some really great work in there on, inside the key, but he was in a vulnerable position. So they made sure they hit him so he went over that baseline. So, again, you cannot cross that baseline if you're not scoring. This is grist to the mill for the Dutch. This is around four possessions in a row where they've eaten up time on the clock. And then a New Zealander has been sent to the sin bin. So again, that resets the shot clock, at least partially. Yeah. Takes time off the clock. And it's present preventing New Zealand from scoring as well. It's a six-point game now. Now there's been a contact, I think. I think there's a contact warning now on the Dutch team. Number eight, Vandalen. And quick score there by the Kiwis. Now this is the time. Transition fast. Pick up your man. This is good. Leslie needs to be on top of 14 there because he can go one-on-one -on -one with him. Stay on top. That's what he needs to do. It's a different style of defence that we're now seeing from the Kiwis. Swarming a full-court press as opposed to oh, sitting back in the key. Leslie doing a great job there. Look, he's really held up that play. And look at that. Oh, timeout Dutch. Great hit there by Lafono. Lafono managed to push Van der Laan, I think it was out of play and it forced just before he was going out of play uh, number eight van der Laan he called a timeout to make sure that 
it wasn't a turnover in favour of New Zealand. That being said, it gives the Kiwis 30 seconds in which to discuss tactics, take a breath. Loma, it will be with the inbound. The Kiwis need to stop the Dutch from scoring on this possession. We've gone from a four-point gap at the start of the third quarter to potentially six points here. And it is indeed six points. Yeah, European teams, they love key attack. This is their bread and butter. You see there, Hayden barton Coots just waiting for Lafono to get free. Nuffy. Oh, that was yeah. close, but Lefono manages to pick up that pass. They were desperate to get the ball over the halfway line within the 12 seconds that you're allowed. New Zealand and just about managed to do it. They need to... I don't think the Kiwis can afford to go back to key, key defence here. They really, they're really chasing the game now, so they need to keep this full-court press happening. Yes, as you say, Jai, European teams tend to like to attack key defences, and also, if you sit back in the key, then you're allowing your opponents to take time off the clock. Exactly, exactly. Halfway through the third quarter, Six-point game, New Zealand with it all to do. HBC now with the ball. That's going to go nowhere, and it's going to be picked up by Fundendop. It's another turnover. And the Dutch, seven points up. HBC just waiting for a screen. Here we go. Good pick by Rolton. Kiwi's got some subs up. They're waiting for a chance to bring on some fresh players. Substitutions have to be when it's a dead ball. So not merely when a try has been scored. Seven point deficit. Barton Coots goes this way and that. Pops yeah. one over the top, and he knows that Leslie will be able so to get onto the end of that. Quick score, I need to transition. And the Kiwis falling back on key. I'm just not quite sure this is the right move right now. I think they really need to keep that pressure on the Dutch. Less than three minutes left in the third quarter. Six points to the good and in possession. You'd say that this is the Netherlands match to lose right now. Can New Zealand wrest back the initiative? They need some sort of spark. They need some sort of big play. Yeah. And then you see Van den Dopp reversing over the line for yet another point. That's a good screen by Lafono. There we go, HPC's free now, on the run. And Rolton with the score. I think most people were looking at Leslie and I thought he'll never yeah. catch up with that, yeah. but he was into the lap of Rolton. Why can I, man? Good patient pushing there by Van den Dopp. Takes his time. Time is the enemy of the Kiwis at the moment. And the Dutch to the manner born here they are. Playing some very, very calm rugby. Yeah. They've been so impressive. Oh, I think we might have a foul here on Van der Laan. Again, a holding foul. Can't touch the body of 
the opposing player. So this finally allows New Zealand to make some substitutions. On comes Dan Buckingham, a three-pointer. Maya Marshall Armai is back on as well. So Dan, former teammate of mine for Athens Paralympics in Beijing Paralympics. Means that Hayden Barton Coots has gone off, but to me he's cut a, a rather lethargic figure, particularly in the second half. He hasn't had his usual spark. Buckingham will bring just something different from the Kiwis at the moment, I think. In terms of classification, it's a like for like. Buckingham and Barton Coots both three pointers. Marshall Armai on for Lefono. And again, nice, quick score. Well, we're now getting into that almost last minute territory where time management is. Yeah going to be a question but the main thing is it there we go yeah. we finally have a turnover the main thing is scoring points getting turnovers and scoring points that's exactly what the wheel blacks need to do now it's all they need to do they desperately need turnovers and they desperately need points and again every time they just change the lineup just even slightly it just gives the Dutch something to, different to think about Leslie really trying to work his way through. Will he get through? Needs to get just a caster over the line, and he does it. Oh, they gave him that score. He really had to fight. The Dutch trying to challenge the call. Kiwi's back within five. And no key defense now. They're swarming around now. Full court press. What can Great Maya defense, do? am I? Now the Dutch are going to try and run this down for a last to score here. They'll really run out the clock. They've got the ball the next quarter, so they'll want to score last here. They've also got a timeout if they need to take it, but I think they're okay. I think the shot clock is the same as the time clock. You can hear them. I oh, know they're counting down, so now they're going to take the yeah. timeout. So they got to within 15 seconds. And the shot clock was about to expire. And the fact that Fandendop took that timeout means that the shot clock will be reset to 15, making it the same as the game clock. So they now have 15 seconds, or 14.5 seconds, in which to score, get the last score of the quarter. And then they will have possession at the start of the final quarter, which could make it. It's five points the difference at the moment. If they score here and at the start of the final quarter that would make it seven points yeah, this is a huge play for the this Kiwis is, here and they this is great this is exactly what they need to do is come out and surprise them press them press them press them the Dutch have been liking them sitting back again see a turnover Pressure. Leslie gets a hand in there absolutely perfectly so can New Zealand reduce the deficit can they score in the next 10.4 seconds and Todd, Michael Todd has come on, the number eight. He's the one who's going to have the inbound. Subs went up, so Todd will have to, I think he has to stay on. I don't think the subs are on, up on the bench at the time. So the subs have to be declared before the plays, uh, before the whistle's gone, which it had not. So they have to be ready to come on. So, waiting for the inbound. The clock will start once it's touched, oh. and the Dutch have got possession back. Leslie tries to steal it again. Well, the Kiwis did pull it back, but big quarter coming up. So, the Dutch lead by five points going into the final three-minute break.
It's the final quarter of this opening Group B match. New Zealand with it all to do. They have eight minutes to overcome a five-point deficit. The Dutch have played perfect rugby thus far, and they have the possession arrow, so they have the first possession going into this final quarter. Paralympic qualification up for grabs. The first three in this eight-team tournament will make it to Paris. The rest will just have to watch on TV, and New Zealand certainly hoping that that is not the fate that befalls them. The oh. Dutch make it a six-point game. Lomas has come up with a couple of those big scores today. Just that option right at the last. He's really helped them out of trouble. Ah, uh, yes, so the Dutch on their second contact, you get one contact warning, like a, we call it a free contact each quarter, uh, each half, and the Dutch were already on a warning for contact before the whistle. So Van der Laan will spend the next minute in the bin or until Cameron scores here. And he's going to score very quickly now, because they absolutely need to, why they're <laughs> not that quickly because he wants to make sure yeah. that they're putting a trap on Van der Laan so he can't get out of the sin bin unless he calls and says he will do the inbound. And that, I do believe, is what he has done. So Van der Laan, to spring the trap, has said, I will do the inbound, but that means that a 2.5 pointer is doing the inbound and he's off the court. So you've only got 5.5 points on the court. Good defense, this is great. Oh, still Dutch ball, but still good defense. It's good defense. New Zealand don't get the ball, but it doesn't reset the shot clock as far as the Dutch are concerned. So it means they're still, it's time critical for them. Myra Mai fighting all the way to the last. Oh. Great hustle. Six points, seven minutes. That is the equation for the Kiwis. Gavin Rolton long. There goes the big one. Is he going to make it to him? It oh, is. and he takes the hit. Now, Rolton's a point five, so he doesn't have the arm and hand function to just get the ball away easily like a Meyer Amai or a Hayden Barton Coots. Rolton, a C5 quadriplegic, so that means he's he had an injury on the fifth vertebrae on his neck. Oh, no goal. That little fumble. That little fumble. So, again, he crossed the line without actually having control of the ball. One of his wheels was over the line without Rolton being in full possession of the ball. So that means it's an inbound from the sideline. New Zealand need to get the ball back as soon as possible. 12 seconds for the Dutch to get over the halfway line, so they're going to throw one out now. Leslie's going to get there. The only problem is this is taking time off the clock. It was great work there by Bolzan. Again, the Dutch just so good at that key attack. Just amazing. The passes they have managed to throw out to the likes of Hector Loma and then Jop van der Laan, the number eight there. Loma, well, yeah. doesn't manage the turnover, but they won't mind that. It's time taken off mm -hmm. the clock. It's another inbound and an awkward inbound from the sideline. Corners are one of the hardest places to inbound from. You can see the baseline, the, the corner, the sideline. It's hard to get out of this position. Need to get the ball over the halfway line within 12 seconds. It's a timeout or a Hail Mary, and it's a timeout. And you can see the way the Dutch are celebrating the fact that New Zealand have taken their final timeout. Seven minutes, sorry, seven points, five and a half minutes to go. It's becoming 
an even more uphill battle as every second ticks off the clock here. It's uh, more than a turnover a minute, so the Kiwis will really have to hustle from here. Kiwis have made a change here. Buckingham back on. Buckingham on. Barton Coots off. Leslie with it all to do. And just didn't quite catch that, my RMI. Nothing going right today for the Kiwis. An awkward corner inbound for Loma, but he won't mind that. If anything, they can afford to run down the clock. 40 seconds at a time, but they're just inexorably yeah. scoring the Dutch. He's being so strong today, Loma. Just, just when they need him, he's being there, just taking those goals, you know, being the, available for the pass. Buckingham, good control. Oh. Possession remains with New Zealand. But they're eight points adrift with just under five minutes to go. You know, a game like this, Drew, just really shows what getting to a Paralympics means to these teams. You know, like the Dutch have just really brought it today. It just shows what they, you know, like as the Kiwis are and all the teams here, they just really want those last three spots. Watching this, Germany will be licking their lips. So a turnover in terms of time and shot clock and it's all going the way of the Dutch. So the two finalists from this tournament will make it through to the Paralympics, as will the winner of the bronze medal match. And the favourites are Australia and Canada. And then the bronze medal match. Well, before the tournament, people were thinking New Zealand, Germany, maybe Brazil. Now it looks like New Zealand are going to be relying on Brazil to do them a favour. Now, this is the lineup I've been looking to see come out here for the Kiwis. This is their 3 1 3 3 1 1. This might just bring something slightly different that the Dutch haven't seen. So, this is good. Cameron Leslie has gone off. Hayden Barton Coots back on. He's there with Daniel Buckingham. So two three-pointers and two one-pointers. Four minutes to go. A nine-point deficit, though. This is good. Hayden Barton Coots on the charge. This is great. This is the sort of stuff. This is a good changer. Quick scores. Quick scores, quick turnovers. It's not over yet. The problem is New Zealand are going to have to take real risks. They're going to have to put the arm in there. Well, this is going to be a chance. Fouls. Oh, great take. Bazan. Such a good take under pressure. It was Ben Bazan, a one-pointer. And the fact that he managed to lean forward and take that ball. Barton Coots telling his teammates to get forward. Buckingham, Buckingham. finds himself hemmed in. Gives it back to Barton Coots. He's going to go this way and that, but he's got Van der Laan with him for company. Every second counting against the Kiwis and in favour of the Dutch. And back to HPC. Looking for Lynch. Lynch again, a one-pointer. He can't get the ball away quite as well as the others. And Buckingham scores. Well, now looking at the scoreboard, it's an eight-point game. And you think that 
there's no way the Kiwis can turn it around from here. So every point may well count if New Zealand can beat Brazil and Brazil beat the Dutch, then everyone will be on one win and two defeats. If you assume that Canada get the best of the other teams in the group and then it comes down to a point count back. And if the Dutch end up beating New Zealand by nine points, that will be a huge deficit to overcome. And Everson's long here. See, the other difference this lineup brings out right now is, is two pick bars. You'll see that the chairs are slightly all different. So there's chairs that are longer. They've got these bars at the front that are designed to like pick the other chair and hold them. So the Kiwis with Lynch and, and Everson have the ability to pick and hold chairs in this lineup. Getting down towards the final two minutes. The Dutch with an eight point lead. Dutch happy to run down time on the clock. Van den Dopp over the top and yet again. Van den Dopp, Van der Laan, Loma have been so good with the key attack. A coach's timeout taken. Gavin Rolton and Greg Mitchell will have some advice for their players, but look at the smile on the face of Martin van Hinter. What a performance it's been from his team. A reminder that the Dutch are the lowest ranked team at this event, eight teams involved, and they are 15th in the world. We've got Australia at number two, Canada number five, the favorites, New Zealand number eight, third highest ranked team at this tournament, but they find themselves Backs to the wall, and we have a debut for Jacinta Richardson. She's come on, and there she is. Can she corral this one before the line? Yes, she can. That's great for her. It's great for New Zealand. Every point could end up being crucial if we have a count back. It's a four-team group. The top two go through to the semis. So New Zealand not out of this yet. They'll either need a miracle against Canada or a victory over Brazil and then Brazil to do them some favours and beat the Dutch. But every point is going to count here, so they need to keep on fighting right to the very end and the key attack for the Dutch once again. The way the Northern Hemisphere teams, particularly the Europeans, love to play. You see it so often with the French. Jonathan Iverna, Sebastien Verdun. Those little passes over the top into the key. Richardson fires one forward, but to no one in particular. The Dutch are going to take the time. And we're going to get a turnover. So that hopeful ball from Richardson has ended up paying off. It was a held ball and now possession for New Zealand. They're not going to be able to win this game, but every point is going to count on the count back. Two more matches to come for New Zealand after this one against Brazil and against Canada. They're playing Brazil on Thursday, Canada on Friday. The Dutch running down the clock. You can hear the Entourage counting down. The Dutch use their final floor timeout. 
that will reset the shot clock to 15 seconds. And I'm pretty sure they will quite happily put the ball in their laps and nurse this win over the line. What a performance it's been from the Dutch. Struggled at the European Championships that were held in May in Cardiff at the Principality Stadium, what was the Millennium Stadium alongside the Arms Park, a legendary rugby union venue. And the Dutch finished sixth overall. They lost to Switzerland in the fifth and sixth place playoff, but they're belying their lowly status, 15th in the world. You can hear their entourage counting down. So New Zealand with one last possession. Prior to that, we're going to have to get, I think it's Van der Laan, back on two wheels. They've only used five players today in what is a small squad and they could well end up being very tired as this tournament wears on, but they won't worry about that. A final Hail Mary, but it comes to nothing. And the Netherlands have created the first upset of this Paralympic qualifying tournament, defeating the host nation, New Zealand, 44 to 36. A great performance from them. They only really used five players, but those five players, Ben Bazoun, Joop van der Laan, Davy van den Dop, Hector Loma, and Joop van der Laan, incredible performance from them. The Kiwis ran through much of their lineup, tried various line changes, but nothing seemed to come off. The line changes worked for maybe a minute or two at a time and gave the Dutch something else to think about. But the Dutch really had a game plan. New Zealand preferring to go key defence and have all four of their players defending back in front of the key. And that seemed to play into the hands of the Dutch who love to attack an opposing key. And you saw the number of passes over the top to Van der Laan. Davy van den Dop, the number 14. Number 42, Hector Loma. It was a great game plan from Martin van Hinter. And the Dutch, well, they get themselves top of Group B. The other two teams being Brazil and Canada. So that is the flag that is flying proudly at the moment. New Zealand now with it all to do, playing Brazil on Thursday at 12.30, and then Canada on Friday at 3.30. Martin van Hinter with a big hug for Jop van der Laan. All the focus on the Dutch team, as well it might be. Oranje Bolver, the oranges are on top. Applause for the crowd from the Kiwis, and there's a big crowd that's come here to the NZCIS, but they're going to go home disappointed today. Not over yet for New Zealand, but now the Dutch can dream of a semi-final spot. And then who knows if they win that semi-final, they will find themselves going to Paris. So, Germany 58, Colombia 51 was the first match of the day. Australia 60, Switzerland 40. And then, well, we've just seen New Zealand 36, Netherlands 44. The final match of the day will be the other two Group B teams, Canada versus Brazil. And that will be in one hour's time.
So the top four teams are in Group A, the bottom four in Group B, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Canada, Brazil. Canada, the favourites to top Group B. So the Dutch in the box seat as far as Group B is concerned and New Zealand with it all to do. And we're going to hear from one of their players now who is down talking to my fellow commentator, Jai White. And it's Cody Everson. Uh, Cody, tough game first up. The Dutch really brought it today. Yeah, yeah, the Dutch played really well. You know, we had our plans coming into the game and uh, unfortunately for us, they just got out there and played a little bit better. Those four trunk players out there, really tough to get on top of, right? Yeah, honestly, it's the first time a lot of us have played them and we didn't we didn't expect uh, them to turn that quick and, and to be that strong and unfortunately we, we didn't adjust. But, um, you know, we've got to move forward from here and, and think about the next one. It's not over yet. Yep. Two more games. Uh, tomorrow the Brazilians looking for a big one. Yeah, us New Zealanders, we, we like to make it tough on ourselves. So, you know, we're going to give it our best and we're going to go out there and we're going to, you know, do New Zealand proud and do ourselves proud. So, yeah. Awesome. Good luck, man. Cheers. Cody Everson there. New Zealand are facing Brazil, who finished third in the Parapan Games, got bronze medal in the Parapan Games behind USA and Canada. But let's now hear from a member of the Dutch team, and Jai Waite has got Jop van der Laan. No, he's got Davy van der Dop with him. Davy, uh, congratulations. Good win. Yeah, it was a very tough battle because we didn't know what to expect. We know they're very good, the Wheel Blacks. Uh, but in the end, we played like a mature, so it was freaking nice. So yeah, yeah, it was nice. Um, and from that game, uh, up tomorrow, you've got the Can uh, Canadians. Uh, big plans there? Yeah, yeah, they're very high up in the world's ranking. We haven't played them before, but like New Zealand, we maybe surprised them. But uh, we gave our best that game, so yeah. Well, go celebrate and enjoy. Well done. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you. Cheers. I like that from Davy van den Dop. He said we were mature and it was freaking good. So how about that? All in one sentence. And that sums up the Dutch today. A mature performance from them and it was indeed freaking good. So that puts Netherlands top of Group B. New Zealand with it all to do, but they will be able to turn it around against Brazil when they take them on on Thursday. And that match will be at 12.30. In the meantime, the final match of the day here will be between Brazil and Canada. And that starts at 6 o'clock.